This is Rye Movie Guy here, and I am so honored to be joined by my good friend, Jiang Chen. We are going to discuss the Transformers franchise. Uh, we're going to start off talking about what the franchise means to us, what our favorite in the series is, or what show for that matter, any Transformers media, and we're going to wrap it up with our thoughts on the new film. So, Jayan, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited because, as we were just talking earlier, I don't think there's anybody more qualified to talk about Transformers than you, good sir. So, how are you doing today? <laughs> good, good. Thank you so much. Well, honestly, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on the show. So, yeah. Thank you. It's it's our first time doing this, and for people who've been following my channel or are remotely aware of what I do, this is the first time I'll be uh, conducting a show like this, but I love talking movies, so I figured... Why not record it? Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Um, so yeah, we just right. saw the new film last night, Transformers Rise of the Beasts and Glorious IMAX, which is my favorite format to watch uh, a movie. But I wanted to recap real quick before we get into the new film. What is your feeling on the franchise? Like, I know that you're a huge fan, but uh, what does Transformers mean to you? Did you grow up with the show at all or the movies? Um, when someone says Transformers, what does that mean? Uh, right to the point, uh, hot take. <laughs> I think uh, I think the real action Transformers should be should be discussed separately from any non real action Transformer series, uh, well, such as comic books and a cartoon, and even uh, uh, even the model figure that based on the cartoon. Uh, I think we should have uh, placed our conversation and our discussion on these two as separate topics. So uh, okay. for me personally, I would, uh, um, well, what I would do is just approach um, them like individually. So when we, so when we are discussing the Michael Bay, the real action movies, so we tend to, so, well, not just me, like many Die Hard Transformers fans would uh, would much prefer consider them as like a very a unique and a special thing, either in a good way or a bad way. So, yeah. Uh, well, a brief history of myself. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll give you a shorter rundown of how how I got into the whole Transformers thing. So it was actually when I was. Uh, around around like a uh, six or seven year old um and uh it, well it was actually my mom introduced me to the transformers so well back in the day we didn't get that much like a fancy new transformers stuff all we got was the original generation one cartoon couple of films couple of like other like a weird beast combination other like a deviants, if you will. Oh, so I might just offend some of other Transformers fan, <laughs> but yeah. So it was actually the earliest uh, 1984 uh, Generation One cartoon that got me into the whole Transformers series. And um, since then, I I pretty much spent a lot of my time watching or like other series, um, either made by the U.S. or made by the Japan. And uh, um, flash forward to 2007. So it was my first time. And I actually went to the theater with my mom just to watch the first uh, Transformers Michael Bay film actually in the theater. So it was, well, it was a really good time. And uh, yeah. And um uh starting at that point i guess uh the real action film would be would be the thing that pretty much attached on the term transformers for the mainstream so uh since then when people when they start to talk about transformers uh people would naturally assume oh you are talking about the michael bay film instead of things that are prior to 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 the real action film. It's like it's like a Marvel. So yeah. Now the Marvel fans are pretty much stick with with the movies instead. Of, well, in 
Yeah, and I love what you said because that makes sense. It is important to differentiate what type of Transformers you're talking about because, like, you watch the show and the movies and they're completely different. Um, like, the blueprint is there for, like, you know, Optimus, Bumblebee, like, characters that we're familiar with. But we were just talking, like, right before the movie that, like, Sam Witwicky, Shia LaBeouf's character, that's not, like, from the show or anything like that. That's mm -hmm. like the, I don't think so. As far as, uh, well, as far as what I know, uh, he's <laughs> yeah. a completely original character from, from yeah. the reaction. I'd have to, like, double check. I'm pretty sure, like, um, like he might have been inspired by a human character, but I don't think Witwicky was from that show. Um, and, yeah, I think the biggest issue that some people have had is that there are people who do like the Michael Bay films. I have an appreciation for both well, some of them, uh, but because like I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't go my call myself a full on Michael Bay apologist, but I do appreciate his style when it yeah when it's applied to like specific movies like Bad Boys or like uh, like Thirteen Hours. Like when you pair him with the right story, Transformers. I thought he had a good start, and then the series just kind of like went downhill after that. Um, I'll basically just tell you like with Transformers for me, um, I was introduced to them. I was already familiar with it through like cultural osmosis because I just love movies and TV as a kid. And there'd be reruns, but a lot of the newer shows I was more familiar with. And then came the movie and I was a big fan of that original film. Uh, my dad took me to both the, the first two films when I was younger and then ever since like I've seen them in theaters with other people I think the only one I haven't seen in theaters believe it or not that well I was alive for was uh Dark of the Moon I don't know why for some reason I wasn't available that week or that summer <laughs> but um yeah I remember like seeing Transformers 2 leaving the theater and I'm like like nine-year-old Ryan I'm like daddy what'd you think he's like it was just non-stop action like it was just fighting for two hours <laughs> So true, true. Yeah, I think looking back though, uh, we can probably get into our favorites now, or what our favorite film is, or um, you could even pick a comic book or something. Uh, I'm just going by the movies because that's what I'm more comfortable with. Yeah. In terms of the movies, I think the one that's the truest in spirit to the animated show, and is a perfect no. I just think it really has a lot of heart to it. Um. Some people might be surprised. I think it's the 86 animated film, the Transformers, the movie. Kind of an odd title that they have the twice, but I don't think that takes away from the fact that I do think it's still a very entertaining film. And let's not forget, it's it's a kid's show too. So it still functions as that. Uh, I completely agree with that. I think that's by far the best the best Transformers film uh, yeah. we got at the, um, till this very day. So which... Is a good thing and also a bad thing. Come on, guys. 35 years. Uh, it's like, can we get at least one? Although a lot of people, I'll say this, I've grown to appreciate Bumblebee because I liked it the first time I saw it, but it hadn't really stuck with me. So I'm looking to revisit it. But there are aspects of that film that I do appreciate. Like the fact that they said it in the 80s, you really buy the chemistry between Haley Steinfeld and Bumblebee. Sure, it's... It is a little repetitive because it, it is like, oh, like E.T., the whole alien and human becoming friends thing. But there, there's a charm to that movie. And John Cena is like a funny villain to have. Um, yeah, but um, are you a fan of the Bay films at all? Like, are any of them at any chance? Uh, yeah, I particularly like the first one. Just I, I love how they they didn't like completely embrace the original design. They just like when wild with their own like interpretation on how how the mechanics can be transformed also uh seeing all the visual effects uh from 2007 it was it was stunning just so on point and uh i think it uh plot wise uh it has a quite a straightforward quite understandable plot and uh so i felt like a full thing for something like Transformers, that's pretty much all you need. So I kind of, I kind of don't like uh, like other plot shenanigans they did with 
I believe starting from the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one, they're all just I I just really don't get it in terms of in terms of like how the story how the stories go. And uh, so like so well every time I walk into the theater just to watch the Transformers. So I had a, a such a mindset. And I would be like, uh, okay, I'm here for the visual effects, for the fighting. So, yeah, that's that's just for me. And uh, I feel like uh, uh, the first one is really the groundbreaking one. It just established a such a solid foundation uh, in terms of like uh, aesthetics, uh, character design, and uh, if if I believe. It has. It is the first time that uh, people kind of associated it with the connection between Transformers and the human, because uh, well, in the original series, the the well, the storytelling is more leaned towards the perspectives from Transformers. But I felt like uh, the two thousand seven, the the original Michael Bay one was was the one was the one that have like a, have a, let's say a solid connection between uh, human and, and Transformers interaction. I just love how they approached with such unique way of storytelling. Well, it's not like it's very like a brand new thing. I just love how they, how they, how they like storytelling wise, they have the, two simultaneous lines going on at the same time. Yeah. And I think I, well, I do think that that's by far the most important work from the entire real action Transformers franchise. Yeah. Yeah, I think you raise really good points too. And it's funny, I just saw this uh, interview or this conversation that Kevin Feige and John Favreau had for Marvel where they were talking about getting the franchise started and I believe it was Favreau who did say that Transformers you know that was just coming out when they were making Iron Man or like at least getting the film ready and uh it was groundbreaking in a way seeing like live action Transformers not just the action but just seeing them interact with humans in real time because yeah. Yeah, sure like Godzilla had been doing that for years with giant kaiju and robots fighting each other but we hadn't really seen it done and perfected on that scale before. So it, I, you have to commend this series for that. Um, and yeah, like it, it kind of gave a whole new generation confidence and visual effects and integrating them into the story. Um, yeah, I'm glad. That, I'll shout out like the first Transformers too, because sure, like a part of me is nostalgic for when I first saw it, but I really do um, have an appreciation for... Um, I do think it has a lot of heart. There's definitely some dumb humor in it that gets in the way, but I still think at the end of the day, they made a really uh, well-constructed and uh, fun blockbuster. Like, yeah. you can't not think of the summer season without thinking of Transformers. It's become synonymous. Um, again, like you said, for better or for worse, because if we're talking the 2007 film and aspects of the earlier movies, yeah. But if it's more four and five, uh, which we don't have to get into too much, but I think we both agree those are like the worst of the worst. Uh, and yeah, it's crazy. Like I think with the series um, and, you know, trying to keep it positive, I think where the series went was even though Michael Bay admitted himself, he wasn't in like a hardcore fan early in his life. I think he did have this drive to make something special. The one, it's not my favorite, but the one that I find the most fascinating is Transformers 2 because it's like, in a way, it's kind of like this epic failure. <laughs> Just like, you know, it was made during the writer's strike. It has a plot that makes no sense. But, and it's just really weird choices. And yet there's something still mesmerizing to me about that movie. I think, I do think there is some genuinely great um, action sequences. Um, I think there's some cool shots in it too. I have a yeah, joke yeah. with my friends. When you say there's some cool shots, you know you're talking about a bad movie because you're trying to find something good to talk about. <laughs> um, but 
and that's kind of like what I wanted to get into with that sequel too, is that just because something is kind of universally panned or hated doesn't mean there isn't any value in it. I still think, especially the second one, but I'd go for the series as a whole. Some of the best sound design I've ever heard in any movie is in the Transformers series. They really outdo themselves in terms of the audio and visual designs. So. Yeah, I I completely agree with that. So uh, uh, one thing that stands out to me in particular is how, uh, uh, just to see how Transformers interact with the, the buildings and uh, like all more towards the like environmental settings, how how Transformers action, how the how the gun, how the bomb, how the fight have have been like interacting with the environment. I I think uh, I think I think uh, the production team really did a good job each time just to make them look realistic and. Uh, uh, provided something like visually very unique yeah oh yeah i agree with that and i think too um i get we were talking about this after rise of the beasts where it's like even something like dark of the moon i know some fans consider that one of the better ones it is but you know when you're when you're comparing it to like age of extinction and last night which are just worthless to me i mean <laughs> um there's no competition but i'll say this I do think there is some really cool stuff. I like the way that was when Michael Bay was really sort of moving the franchise into 3D territory. Um, and for that, I do think it works because um, you some of the best designs, I think, are in that film. Uh, the moon landing stuff, as goofy as it is, I do like when Transformers gets goofy because it's, it's just fun and it's weird and interesting. And... The way I go about that movie, I'll just kind of like recap the whole series. First movie's good. I think it has way too many characters and a lot to juggle, but I do think it's a good summer blockbuster. Second movie is a mess. Still some cool moments. Dark of the Moon. I think aside from the moon landing stuff at the very beginning, I think it's ridiculously boring. I think there's a lot to get through. Again, the dumb, idiotic, juvenile humor. You have to get, you have to chug through a lot of that, but I think it's arguably Shia LaBeouf's best performance as Sam Witwicky. Um, really emotional stuff with him. And the way that I judge it, you go to see the Transformers. They're the biggest people on the poster, yet they get the least amount of attention in the movies. Dark of the Moon, skip the first two hours, just get to the action, because the Battle of Chicago is amazing. <laughs> um, and then four and five, there's cool moments in there. Lockdown's an interesting villain, um, but again, like they don't give him much to do other than just yell and hunt Optimus. And then five is one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> so, but then Bumblebee was good, so we had that. Yeah, I, I seriously don't have that much memory on the fourth one and the fifth one. I, I sincerely just don't remember them for good just reason. They, <laughs> Part of my brain just like completely blocked them away from me trying to like recall like any of the scene. So I believe the third one is the uh, is that the spaceship, the Ark that was uh, was that the one that driven by Sentinel Prime and uh, they are doing the yeah that was Sentinel explosion. Sentinel yeah. Prime and he was yeah. um, voiced by Leonard Nimoy so which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the third one, I think the action is cool, and um, I know just um, and the Sentinel Prime special, which which nobody has seen that comment, nobody, <laughs> and but it was an interesting the, reveal. So uh, I actually have a quite different take on the third one. I think uh, I think the whole the whole third one. The entire dark side of the moon is very generic. It's just, it's just very generic. So I love the visual effects on the final Chicago battle, but I think they introduced the, like way too many other like random elements, such as like, like alien ship, something like that. Was there like any like alien ship in the yeah? Third like one? they have Patrick Dempsey also. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think <laughs> just in terms of like 
a transformer spider. That's just way too much for me to handle. That's the thing, like the fourth movie, they get so boggled down in like all these human characters that we don't care about. And, mm -hmm. and you know what? It would be fine. Like, I think a huge part of problem with the movies, at least, like the show, it's, it's funny. The show, I think the characters act more human than the movies because like the movies, they, they treat them like cartoon characters. And there's like, nobody acts like a real human being, basically. So there's nobody mm -hmm. to latch on to or relate to. Not until we get to Bumblebee, where Haley Steinfeld is like a young girl who you're like, oh, this seems like somebody that I would know, that I actually would have a conversation with, not this like screwball Looney Tune character that is just yelling the whole movie and just says Optimus or Megatron the whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, so when the Bumblebee first came out, uh, I thought, uh, so, well, it's a reboot. Of the entire series and uh so i honestly thought they would do something like very similar to to the transformers idw comic book so you have like a spotlight chapter for each character then you tell like the main storyline so you tell the story of each individual character and i was super bummed about that i thought so first we have the character spotlight of Bumblebee, maybe the next one we will get Optimus Prime, how he, how he transformed from from who's who's struggling in the political side, Orion, to actually become the next Prime. So I thought that they would do things like that, and uh, uh, seeing seeing Rise of the Beast would be the continuation of the Bumblebee, which kind of makes me sad. Just some part of my heart I just want really want that how uh how the story can be told just in terms of like spotlight based just like the idw comic book i wrote uh, which i really enjoy um oh, yeah so that's a fair point i think too it's probably a good time to get into the new movie but it is like a sequel to bumblebee of sorts um there's no connection to i don't think this is much of a spoiler it doesn't have like um i'll just minor disclaimer for people who are interested but um Haley steinfeld isn't in it most the characters from bumblebee aren't in it except the titular character and it does feel like a real transformers movie like i think it really is one of the better ones and i, I just remember like um it's not perfect there's some stuff that, you know, like we were laughing at in the theater, like plot points, like there's a MacGuffin in the film, like a, this item that they have to catch that drives the story, like this key. And they're like, so we, what turns out, we broke the key and we split it in half. Okay, let's go look for the key. It's not there. No, it turns out we moved the key. And it was just like, it was goofy stuff, but I'll take that over like a plot that doesn't make any sense at all. And again, I really thought the human characters were great. Like Anthony Ramos from, uh, well, he's from a number of stuff. Um, I really loved his chemistry with uh, his co-leads. And um, yeah, there's some stuff that I thought was like a bit rushed, but overall, I still think this is a really good movie. It has, I think, I can't believe I'm saying this because Michael Bay, we know him for his explosions. I think it has some of the best action because you can actually tell what's happening. I thought the effects, they really took their time rendering them. There's a couple of shots that might have been a little questionable for me, but overall, I really thought that um, the effects were pretty seamless for a lot of them. I think this movie has a lot of heart and the soundtrack, too. It's going for like that early 90s feel, which is when the show Beast Wars would have come out. So it has that tie into it. And um, I'm also from New York, so like I have that sentimental connection to it, too. Um, but yeah, I'll turn it over to you. you. You were a fan of this movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Well, uh, this might be my favorite one from the of uh, from the entire franchise besides the first one, I think. So, uh, so well, from my understanding is that I believe both Hasbro and Paramount are trying their best to save the franchise because I know, I know Bumblebee did it really well, but not that crazily well. So 
I well, to some extent, I get it. They are trying to save the franchise, so they trying to put a, a little bit of everything from everywhere into a same film. But like, but well, at the same time, I feel like each part, the unicorn part, the maximum part, part. I think, um, I think all of them are like really well executed. Oh, those look so cool! Like the yeah. and I thought the voice work too was great. Like um, like anytime like Unicron showed up, I was just like, that looks like a real, like I was nervous. <laughs> I was like the whenever the IMAX theater was shaking. By the way, guys, like we saw this at IMAX. This is this is a movie that you should see on like a big screen because it really earns yeah. that. And the, especially yeah. the sequence, I thought the um opening too, well, without giving too much away, but Unicron is involved in the opening. And just seeing him uh like attack these other transformers, I was just like, oh my god! But I'm so happy seeing this on like the biggest screen possible with like a big yeah. Project. It's uh it's a legitimate throwback to the to the 1986 uh, Transformers movie. The first scene would be Unicron eating a planet, and then we are talking. Yeah, and not to mention, unlike again the sequels, just to like hate on four and five some more. We actually have these villains that are set up from the beginning. Like I remember, it was like, um, oh, we have some uh, of a time limit. We'll we'll wrap it up soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like basically, yeah, I was just like watching this. I'm like, wow. Unlike four and five, we have villains that are set up from the get go. That were like, okay, we understand the threat. It's not like uh, what's her name, Quintessa, is it? Or whoever the villain was in the fifth movie. Like they build it up like it's the Thanos of Transformers, but like for casual fans, nobody would know who that is until that that film. And you're like, why am I supposed to be scared of this person I just met? So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I was really taken aback by it, and um, again, not like a masterpiece, but I thought like as a summer blockbuster, as a really fun family action adventure that delivers on what it promises. I thought Rise mm -hmm. of the Beast was great. Yeah, it is great. So, um. Uh, just quick last word. I feel like the film, uh, it's it's very enjoyable. I think it's really watchable. But of course, there are some improvements uh, the production team could make. Just um, uh, me personally, just I kind of dislike the fact that they kind of incorporate that so so many elements, so many throwbacks into one single film they could they could totally take their time just to split the entire two hours into let's say three films so we could do we could do maximums in one and uh, the human robot combination in the second one and uh, then we move on to the actual fight with unicron but like but like at the same time i get it they are trying to say they are trying to save the franchise so yeah uh to me it turned out pretty well i think i think it 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 did do its job yeah it served its purpose i mean and and then some i i really think that there's a lot of heart to the film um again not perfect there's some of the lines of dialogue as good as much as i like goofy transformers it is a little cheesy and they do squeeze in a lot, but I do think for what you're looking for, um, there's a lot of fun too. And there might be like an interesting reveal that I won't spoil, but um, there's a really nice little Easter egg at the end that fans will like. Um, but yeah, I think just to wrap things up, uh, where does this stack up for you? This is you really think this is one of the better ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think I I'm gonna I plan to like rewatch a few of them soon. I think. Just to start from the bottom, go to the top. I think Last Night to me, one of the worst films I've ever seen, so naturally is at the bottom. Four is close because it's almost three hours, and that's unnecessary. But it's right there, I think, because it's a little more entertaining. Then I'll go to Revenge of the Fallen. It's it, I, I love the movie for all the wrong reasons, so that's why it's right there in the middle. Then I'll go Dark of the Moon. First two hours, boring, awful, but the action's great. Then I'll go... I just, it's funny, I just ranked them with uh, our friend Gabriel Bradham. Uh, I'm going to change up my ranking a little bit because the more I think about it, I'm going to go Transformers 1. Then I'm going to go Bumblebee because I just think it's just a better story. It's better put together. 
Then I'm going to go Rise of the Beasts. And then I'm putting the 86 film at the top. I just think that's the purest Transformers film we have so far. So, yeah, any closing thoughts or are you? I, <laughs> well, I have to disagree with that. Just so well, just like I just like what I mentioned. So we tend to keep the conversation separately. So when we are talking about the real action films, that that should be stick to the real action film. We mm, I would much prefer we have like a very dedicated uh, scale on how to rank them. But to me, I think uh, there is nothing better than the first cartoon. Yeah. The 90, I, I the 1986, it. that's... Guys, make sure to like and subscribe. This is Rye Movie Guy. Really excited to get this. Yes, <laughs> smash that thumbs up button. Um, and yeah, expect more movie and TV related stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, a Batman related video soon with our good friend Mark. So he's been in a couple of our short films, but I'm excited to have him in video format like this. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. So see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks.